I remember my first wave about as well as my first steps. So for me, it's always been part of life. And when riding waves becomes part of life, it changes the way you move through it. It coaxes you into this relationship with the natural world. And when I think about the relationship that I've formed, it's hardly surprising that surfing's origins are indigenous. Long before surfing was worldwide, the Kanako Maoli were carving wood slabs from koa and wili-wili trees, riding them across waves and calling these boards alayas. I only know of one person who still shapes these ancient boards, and that's Bronson Lovell. So in hopes of learning a little more about alayas and the origins of surfing, I headed down to his home in Anahola village. Uncle Bronson spoke of his childhood full of tradition, his tone carrying a slight sadness as he reminisced on how much has faded away. But when we started to speak of surfing, and I asked him how he got into shaping Elias, there was a newfound brightness in his tone. I had a dream about him, and something came to me. He told me about, you know what I mean, what you can do and all of this stuff. And the funny thing about this story is the dream when I woke up, from my good, good friend Scooter calls me up like a couple days later. I got a blank for you. And that was my first like solid piece of freaking wood that he got from me. Brian, I, and I shaped that part and I rolled that thing and I learned to ride the ally on that thing and I was like so freaking stoked. Like made me excited about surfing again. Sometimes like the traditional alaya board will take me a couple of months. I don't want to rush into it, you know, I'll just like see something today and maybe I'll see something tomorrow. But honestly, that is really the spiritual part about shaping these bars. They'll talk to you. <laughs> They'll like seriously talk to you. So you just got to pay attention to that thing. Tells you what it wants to be. Oh, yes. I then asked him what he thought surfing meant to his ancestors, to the Kanaka Maoli who've been surfing these very reefs for thousands of years. I'm sure it's really, really special. There's a lot of chants on it. I mean, special chants. Kamoli had his own chant. Their chants out here, a place called Kanaha, translates to easily broken now. What does that mean, don't you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Easily broken. You're bored, your spirit. Nobody really knows, you know, what, what they thought about. So that's, to me, some pretty powerful stuff right there. The unknown. Think about it. What they did with those boards how they surfed. I bet you they ripped that thing. Nobody really knows. You have stories. Like with the unknown, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's like you can just imagine, you know what I mean? Not be clouded by what someone said or, oh, this is it, black and white, you know? Screw that. I love the unknown. Like when I say the wood, when the wood will speak to you, you know what I mean? It's like that is where the magic happens. And of course the grave is, I get to paddle the thing out and surf the thing. But the shaping part for me is my connection to my people and my gift sharing with everybody else. When you fall in love with the ancient practice of sliding across waves, whether you're trying your luck on an alaya or gliding across the water on a modern day surfboard, you're falling in love with the unknown. Waves are mysterious walls of water that make their way across entire oceans, breaking along reefs and crashing against shores. As surfers, we're always trying to guess where the waves are going to be, what they're going to do, how good they're going to get. But there's no way of knowing, and it's this constant state of mystery, this waiting and wishing on the ocean, this is what keeps our lives tied to the whims of the winds and the waves. The Kanaka Maoli gave us this connection, this appreciation for the natural world that runs far deeper than survival. Surfing is life beyond being alive. It's our source of joy, our purposeful play. And I am eternally grateful for the Kanako Maoli, for the riders of the Alaya, and the people that taught the world to surf.